Thanks to our colleagues from Patavagono. Uh, and today we are here, as you know, that we are here to have a book review program, which will be presided by our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir. And we are having three other Vice Chancellors from different parts of India to enlighten us on this review program. So without sparing much time, may I request our VC sir to preside over this session and uh, take further proceedings of this session. Sir, please take care about this. Thank you, Nimai. Uh, before I formally begin the uh, event, let me personally thank my colleagues, uh, Professor V.K. Jain, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Assam University, Tejpur, and Professor Ramashankar Dube, Vice Chancellor of Central University of Gujarat, and Professor Srinivas Vadakaru, Vice Chancellor of Sanskrit University in Delhi. You know, with, with a very short period of time, they agreed to my request, which suggests that they are really dear, fr dear friend of not me, but Bishop Bharati. And they are, I know that whenever uh, we need their help, they are just a phone call away. So I you know, talked to them on phone the other day, and Jain Sahab, Dube Sahab, and Srinivasji, both of them immediately you know, gave their consent. So I'm really grateful to all of you, Jain Sahab, Dube Sahab, and uh, Srinivasji. Now, about today's program, as you all know, Ministry of Education has launched this kind of program just to assess the period during which our Honorable Prime Minister led the nation. Now, there may be many controversies, and uh, you must have seen in today's newspaper in Calcutta that there are some you know, critical voice as well. I mean, that's fine, uh, because in a democracy, critical voice or the importance of critical voice is always there. But you know, when I see the book as a student of social science, 
I think this book is most required at this point of time. You know, as student of social sciences, we try to associate a particular phase with one individual. Now, suppose, you know, we tend to associate India immediately of independence, the Nehruvian phase of India. When you think of computer or the introduction of a computer in a big scale, we associate Rajiv Gandhi and Narsimha Rao. So I think, you know, that the changes which we uh, witnessed since uh, 2014 is really quite you know, stupendous in the sense that we are looking at India from a different uh, mirror. And uh, from uh, that point of view, I, we, everybody agrees that this is the phase of uh, Narendra Modi ji as the Honorable Prime Minister of India. I mean, uh, of course, you know, he was guided by his colleagues, uh, equally uh, able colleagues, but at the same time, you know, uh, the history is being um, organized, history is being, you know, articulated in a language, which is the language of the Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji. So I think, you know, in that case, the book is a, is a, I, I'd say it's a document, you know, of a particular period of history. One may disagree, you know, there are many points, there are many individuals who may disagree with the assessment which I am going to put forward or my colleagues will, uh, will put forward. But, you know, there is no denying the fact that this is a particular phase of Indian history when we are being acquainted with the different idioms of nation, nationalism, and national identity. I mean, you know, somehow or the other, we forgot that, you know, as Indians, we are really quite enriched, not only now, but also in the past. And this is the credit of um, the present um, dispensation uh, and also our Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji. Even the other day, I attended a lecture, uh, another conference on PC Ray and nationalism. Now, Acharya P.C. Ray, you know that he was the one who founded Bengal Chemical, but not everybody knows that he was associated with the revolutionary nationalist movement in Bengal. And at one point of time, Bengal Chemical was shut down simply because Bengal Chemical was reported to have supplied nitric acid to the revolutionaries. And, you know, nitric acid is very useful component of bombs. So, you know, um, uh, now we are, we are looking back that, you know, at one point of time, we did many things together. We did many remarkable things together. So what has happened, which returned us from doing all these things? So from that point of view, the discussion of this particular book is very important. And if you look at the book, it's a, com it's a, com a compilation of articles written by many big names. There are five sections and each section uh, has all, more than three or four articles. So about 20 plus articles. And you'll find big names like, you know, uh, Arvind Paragaria, the, the professor of economics at Columbia. Then you have got um, uh, Nandan Nilekani, the Infosys uh, CEO at one point of time. Nipendra Bissa, or one of the, you know, uh, very well-known um, decision makers, policy makers. Shudha Murthy, the, the one of the uh, founders of Infosys. Then um, we have um, the foreign minister, J S. Jai Shankar. I mean, he, besides being foreign minister, as you know, was an able administrator vis-a-vis -vis foreign relations in India. We have an uh, article by Shadguru. Um, and we talk about uh, him quite a lot nowadays. We have an um, article by Surjit Bhalla. We have article by uh, Amish Tripathi. I mean, who, who is now very well known, you know, who is writing on many myths and he's trying to expose the real meaning of those myths and very, you know, uh, uh, writing uh, these widely uh, sold books. So I think if you look at this particular book, it is not a, a kind of hagiographical study of an individual, but it is a, an assessment, an objective assessment of a particular period um, by many uh, top intellectuals of the country. So it is not, as I said, uh, just a kind of worship uh, of uh, an individual or a particular um, political dispensation, but it is actually an, an objective assessment of the situation uh, of the of the era, which started with uh, 2000 in 2014 and continuing. So I think you know, friends, um, and university as you know is the right place uh, uh, for discussion of this kind of issues. Here I would like to draw your attention to the Voltaire's famous statement that I may not agree with you. But I'll certainly fight, you know, for your right to um, discuss, right to raise your voice. 
So I think, you know, those who are opposed to this kind of discussion, I just would like to remind them of this famous statement of Voltaire and also Gandhiji. You know, Gandhiji um, always allowed, you know, ideas to come to him, but he at the same time warned us that don't get uprooted, you know, from the wind of ideas coming from outside. So I think, you know, uh, uh, the detractors the, the, the who always try to find uh, problems with this kind of effort uh, in a university like Vishwabharati or for that matter, in any university, because many universities are doing these things. I'm sure those who write uh, negative things uh, about this kind of discussion, let them, uh, let, uh, let me tell, let me uh, categorical state here that, you know, many universities are doing it. Many universities are, have undertaken this kind of exercise. We have with us three uh, vice chancellors of three renowned universities. And I, I know that these three universities have also already undertaken this kind of exercise. It is ex an exercise which should be undertaken in every university simply to understand the particular era that you know un started unfolding um, uh, with the kind of decline of Nehruvian consensus uh, especially since 2014. So from that point of view, this particular book is a historical document. And uh, in future, those who will do research uh, on this particular period of history, this particular book will act as an important source uh, for the researchers. So, uh, but anyway, you know, I, I'm not supposed to um, uh, review the book. I'm not supposed to express my opinion on this particular book, but you know, to start with, uh, I thought that I must you know, add a kind of preface to today's discussion. And with this um, uh, few words, again, I thank um, the speakers, the, the well-known speakers, and also the participants you know, from my university and also from other universities, because there are many other university uh, uh, faculty members, they asked for link and I said, I shared the link with them. So we'll expect many people from all over the country and students, you know, they should also learn. And they may, may not agree with the assumptions made by the authors who wrote for this particular book, but at least they should learn that there is a point of view. And if they have differed from that point of view, let them develop their own argument. And if the speakers are um, willing, we can have a, a short discussion immediately after the um, uh, speech of the speakers um, is over. So with these words, uh, let me first welcome uh, Jain Sah, Professor V.K. Jain, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Assam University, Tejpur, to just uh, take the uh, floor and please share your views with us. Jain Sah, it's you. you now. Thank you, Professor Chakravarti. Uh, and uh, I express my heartfelt gratitude to you for having invited me for this, uh, for this event. Uh, I've gone through the book uh, personally through uh, not all the chapters, but yes, some of the chapters which are of uh, interest to me. Um, and uh, this has given me an insight into the thought process uh, of this visionary leader of ours, uh, which is uh, taking India forward uh, in many uh, sectors. Uh, but before I do that, uh, uh, let me just quote from this uh, book. Uh, it, um, Modi has written this uh, in a convenient action. Uh, and that's where he mentions that the bounties of nature in circulating waters of streams, seas and oceans, hills, snowy mountains and forests all have to be guarded and replenished if used so as to yield as a sustainable amount of food, milk, and other agricultural products, and ultimately bestow us with splendor, strength, and brilliance. Sustainability is ultimately a moral issue since it involves the protection of the interests of our future generations. So if you look at uh, the prime minister's uh, tenure as chief minister in Gujarat uh, during 2000, one onwards up to 2014, his entire uh, governance uh, was based on a economic development model, which was uh, sought to be environmentally sustainable. And this model, which was participatory, which involved the engagement of the communities uh, so that uh, all the stakeholders are on board uh, as far as the 
delivery uh, of the some of the objectives he, his government had uh, set out. Uh, let me just uh, start uh, with another uh, uh, anecdote, uh, which is mentioned in this book. Uh, when uh, the prime minister was simply RSS worker or a karikarta, way back in 1979, there was this uh, uh, flash flood due to the collapse of this Machu uh, Dam uh, in the Morbi district of Gujarat. Back then, he was a simple kind of social worker. He camped in that district uh, for many days and uh, he saw the devastation caused by those flash floods. He mobilized the youth in that town and uh, uh, instilled a, a, a sense of uh, responsibility in all of them to do something about uh, you know, uh, restoring the town uh, to its original self. So uh, it is, uh, uh, this gives an insight into as to how he goes about, uh, about doing something, even if he doesn't have the resources, the financial resources and other types of support systems with him. But so he very strongly believes in mobilizing people, in mobilizing the youth uh, to get the job done. Uh, uh, let me just uh, elaborate on some of the, uh, I would uh, call them success stories as far as the Gujarat is concerned. To begin with, uh, let me uh, say something about the, the water availability in the state of Gujarat when he assumed uh, charge as chief minister of Gujarat. Uh, it is mentioned in the book that uh, at, before 2001, uh, Gujarat had serious water shortage and there used to be the so-called water uh, riots uh, before 2001. He took up this water issue uh, as a major challenge and uh, his government set about uh, laying the, the water pipelines and the, and the construction of the uh, 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 water bodies uh, and the filtration in the treatment plants. And today, uh, everyone in Gujarat has access to portable, portable water. I mean, this is, uh, you know, he, he did in a short span of time. And this is, the, uh, uh, this is one example of uh, how Modi can deliver if he sets out to do something about addressing a uh, about addressing an issue, similarly, I mean his contribution as far as the uh, environmental protection and wildlife conservation is concerned, uh, you, there are some success stories mentioned in the book with regard to the conservation of the wildlife, whether it is the the whale shark or whether it is the population of the gir lions uh, in the Gujarat state. Uh, uh, has been doing pretty well as far as the environmental uh, conservation is concerned. And uh, his initiative of even restoring the mangroves uh, with a view to uh, somewhat uh, mitigate the impact of the cyclones along the coastlines of Gujarat is another uh, noteworthy uh, achievement of his. Uh, but one thing which, uh, which he later on replicated uh, at the national level was his, his uh, mission for this renewable energy. Uh, he made a very modest beginning by having a one megawatt uh, solar uh, power plant on uh, one of the tops of a canal. And the, uh, and, and the objective was not only to generate solar power, but also uh, to see to it that the evaporation of water from that canal, because, it, because the canal was covered, uh, is minimal. So that addressed the problem of uh, even the water shortage uh, for the farmers, because the farmers were getting adversely impacted by the issue of this evaporation. And, uh, uh, and then the generation of uh, clean power through the solar modules. Uh, then uh, after the success of this one megawatt uh, uh, solar uh, power project, he went on to scale it up to 10 megawatts. Uh, and later on, he covered this solar project uh, covering something like 500 kilometers of the canal length. Now, 
that project actually gave him this uh, confidence that later on uh, uh, when he came to in fact uh, at the center when he uh, when he became prime minister his uh, his call for enhancing the 20 gigawatt uh, target of solar energy under the solar mission uh, of the country uh, he uh, made it 100 gigawatt and this experience of his from gujarat got translated into something more uh, tangible at the national level. Now, uh, as far as the education sector is concerned, uh, very often some, some critics of his government would say that uh, Modi hasn't done much for the education sector, but this is not true. In Gujarat, for example, when he saw, when he was the chief minister, when he saw that the the only 33% of the students in, uh, you know, uh, who enroll in the primary education, only 33% students pass out. Now that's a very abysmally low number. So what he did, he, uh, he uh, along with his, uh, the entire bureaucracy used to go to the villages and uh, ensure that, uh, the, uh, that the students get enrolled in some uh, some 18,000 villages, uh, they ensured that the uh, enrollment is 100%. Now, this is the zeal of the man. This is the, the man on a mission. He ensured that the, especially the girl child, all the students, including the, girl, including the girls, now get enrolled in the primary uh, schools across the entire state of Gujarat. This is what he did. And many people, uh, uh, do not know uh, because that is the public perception. But even in Gujarat, uh, he expanded the higher education sector a great deal from 11 universities when he took over as chief minister to something like 42 universities. Uh, that is his uh, uh, his contribution as far as the uh, the uh, the, higher, the education sector is concerned. And uh, uh, he was also worried about the quality of the education. So he ensured that in Gujarat, the schools, the, the quality is ensured and the education is outcome based. Now, uh, in this book, these are some of the uh, uh, instances which have been mentioned. And uh, when he became the uh, prime minister, uh, he drew upon the experience of his uh, being the chief minister in Gujarat. And when he came to the center, in fact, he inherited all king size problems which the country uh, was facing or is uh, continues to face even today, uh, but uh, in spite of his best effort. Uh, but if you look at his entire energy and all his uh, missions and uh, programs of various ministries, they're all geared towards addressing these issues. He has been uh, successful to a great extent in some of them, but a lot more work is still needs to be done. Uh, these, uh, these problems, which I mentioned were the king size, uh, or some of them were chronic problems, poverty, hunger, water, sanitation, energy, health, education, all of them he has tried to address uh, in, a, uh, in, a, in a manner uh, that uh, the, the population of our country, every single citizen uh, gets the benefit of the uh, economic progress uh, uh, while at the same time uh, ensuring, ensuring, as I mentioned initially in that quote, well, at the same time ensuring that Hello? the economic progress or the development is, is environmentally sustainable. So just, let's just have a look at what, uh, uh, what all he has uh, done over the years. As far as, as far as the financial inclusion is concerned, he has uh, uh, ensured that there are something like 440 million Jandhan accounts now. And uh, he has introduced this direct bank, uh, bank transfer. Uh, he, he has abrogated Article 370 and uh, his enabling policies, as far as the uh, startup ecosystem is concerned, has uh, now made uh, some 
has, has made the youth come up with these startups to the extent of 75,000 startups are there in the country. Number of unicorns in the country as of now are 105. And as you know, the success story as far as the COVID uh, vaccination program is concerned, something like uh, uh, two, uh, something like 67 percent of the population of our country has got uh, uh, fully vaccinated, and uh, 74 percent of people of our country have uh, first dose. Um, in addition, even in in, in sectors like uh, sports. He has a great vision. In fact, he's introduced this uh, scheme, TOPS. Uh, this is target Olympic uh, podium scheme where he uh, has provided generous support through, through the sports ministry or ministry of youth and sports affairs uh, for, the, for the, uh, uh, the sporting uh, uh, youth of our country. And uh, the, this has been very eloquently mentioned by P.V. Sindhu uh, in her article. And she has also mentioned how Prime Minister has this great ability to uh, inspire and motivate uh, the younger generation. Uh, before I come to that, let me, uh, if, if the time, uh, Professor Chakravarti, do I have some more time? Hello? Ajay, sir, please carry on. Please Ajay. carry on. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, the first thing which is so apparent in this book is his enormous contribution as far as addressing the issue of climate change is concerned. And coupled with that is also the expansion of the renewable energy sector in our country. And I mentioned the, uh, the, uh, the project which he had uh, um, in, in, uh, in Gujarat. And now uh, in, in, uh, at, at the national level, uh, he has now the confidence of even going uh, further than that 100 gigawatt of solar energy. In fact, recently in the COP26, uh, he made a promise or he pledged that 50% uh, of the total electricity production will come from renewables. Now that's a very ambitious target, but that is born out of the fact that he has confidence in the ability of the uh, of the scientists of the uh, of the entrepreneurs uh, and uh, and the uh, the other ancillaries in this country uh, to see to it that the 50 percent of the energy mix is through renewable energy but one of his uh, seminal contributions as far as the fight against the climate change is concerned is is uh, uh, the idea of International Solar Alliance. In fact, he is the chief architect of that, along with the French president. And uh, this is a, uh, a path-breaking uh, initiative on the part of uh, uh, on the part of the Honorable Prime Minister. Another very significant initiative, uh, which is also a multilateral initiative, that is CDRI, that is Coalition of Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, and that he. Uh, has uh, uh, put forward with the help of the uh, United Kingdom. Uh, so in the, in the area of renewable energy and the climate change, as uh, most of you are aware that uh, India is, has been one of the leading countries advocating um, the, the, the necessity uh, of the uh, urgent steps which need to be taken to address this problem of climate change. In fact, a lot of people give credit to the Prime Minister Modi and for his leadership at the Paris Agreement for, uh, for making the deal possible there. Uh, now, there are other uh, very important uh, initiatives uh, which Prime Minister Modi has uh, undertaken. And as you all know, the Swachh Bharat mission stands out among them. Uh, the very first year in 2014, when he became the prime minister, uh, as a tribute to uh, uh, M.K. Gandhi, uh, he, uh, he started the Swachh Bharat mission. And till date, the success of that mission can be gauged by the fact that 109 million toilets have been built. And uh, he also started this uh, uh, very innovative idea of having competition between the various cities 
uh, for, uh, for, you know, for the status of the cleaner city in the country. I do remember when this scheme was launched uh, in, the, in, in 2014, and there were some critics, you know, who were laughing at the the whole thing. No, oh, India will never uh, um, uh, improve, and the things will remain the way they are, and so on. But we, I, I'm sure that all of us would agree that there has been a perceptible change as far as the cleanliness in villages, in towns, and cities uh, is concerned. But more importantly, the the basic amenities like building of toilets, et cetera. I mean, this is one of the uh, great achievements uh, out of this Swachh Bharat mission. The other uh, mission uh, is the Amrit mission, uh, which is uh, Atal mission on rejuvenation of urban infrastructure. In the first instance, some 500 cities covering 60% of urban population uh, were covered. But under Amrit 2.0, uh, based on the success of the first mission, now 4,700 towns and cities uh, are to be made uh, water secure, which means that they, all households in these 4,700 towns and cities will be provided uh, are, or are sought to be provided the, the uh, water tap connection. And in addition, 100% coverage of sewerage connection and septage tank connection to 500, uh, the earlier uh, uh, lot of the urban cities, uh, 500 Amrit uh, cities, uh, which were recognized or identified in the Amrit Mission 1. Uh, so this Amrit Mission is another flagship scheme of the, of the, uh, of the government. Now, one uh, example which, which stands out in this book as far as the energy efficiency uh, initiatives are concerned, uh, they deal with this introduction of LED bulbs. Um, and the, look at the prime minister's very imaginative and innovative thought process. Uh, the LED bulb uh, was very uh, expensive to begin with. It was something like 400 and 500. And the, and the public did not buy this, uh, uh, this very expensive bulb. So what was suggested was that uh, can the electricity distribution companies um, take the responsibility of selling these LEDs? And, uh, and that too, through an in, you know, some kind of uh, uh, installment, monthly installment. So when the uh, public saw that uh, uh, monthly installment is something like 10 rupees a month, but the savings in electricity is about 18 rupees a month, that became a uh, little more popular. So the LEDs became more popular. And as the popularity of LED bulbs grew uh, more and more, uh, the larger scale production of LEDs also ensured that uh, these LEDs were <coughs> At a, at a very competitive price of something like 70 rupees or 60 rupees. And now uh, I think it is available for nearly 40 rupees. So LED, uh, introduction of LED. And today uh, in the country, something like 80% of the lighting needs are taken care of, whether it is the domestic sector or commercial sector, uh, the lighting needs are uh, in a major, uh, to a major degree are taken care by the LED bulbs. Similarly, he emphasized on the other energy efficiency drives in the, in the uh, thermal power sector without disturbing the existing uh, production systems of the energy, which is still uh, uh, fossil fuel based thermal power plants. So uh, his suggestion was that let us have uh, uh, an improvement uh, in, in the efficiency of uh, of these thermal power plants. So that is one area where India has made significant progress. In, uh, in addition, the switching from the coal, gradual switching from the coal to the natural gas also helped in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in these energy efficiencies. And uh, what uh, was noticed by the author of this book, uh, who himself is an energy expert, what was noticed by him that in Gujarat, 
whereas the economic growth was 7 to 8%, but the energy demand only grew from 4 to 5%. So he, his conclusion was that the economic growth is not necessarily uh, coupled uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the energy growth. So economic growth, so there is a decoupling of the economic growth and the energy growth. And this decoupling was made possible only because of Modi's uh, emphasis on energy efficiency improvement in thermal power sector and in the, uh, in the uh, energy efficiency improvement in the domestic and commercial sector. So this, there, is a, there was a big learning uh, from that experiment uh, of Gujarat, which was, uh, uh, which was replicated at the, at the central uh, or, or at the national level. So this is something which also tells you about the, the uh, not only this uh, great visionary mind, but also about this entrepreneurial or, uh, you know, a person who is very apt at uh, business models or uh, coming up with uh, novel business models. And that's the hallmark of this visionary leader, uh, the Prime Minister Modi. Um, I can go on and on, but, uh, uh, but let me just, uh, uh, just say a few words with regard to as to why the youth of the country uh, is so enamored of our prime minister. What attracts the youth to like uh, our prime minister? And uh, P. V. Sindhu has mentioned in her article uh, uh, as to why the youth of our country resonate uh, with the prime minister. A. Our prime minister has the ability to dream big. He has uh, this great resolve and determination uh, to realize his dreams. And one of the things which is noticeable uh, about Prime Minister, whether he was in Gujarat or even now at the center, he has been there now for nearly uh, uh, eight years, is that whatever targets he sets, he tries to achieve those targets in a time-bound manner. Second thing is he's incorruptible. He leads by example through his hard work and he involves the community. Anything which he does in Gujarat, he did the same. And all his uh, uh, initiatives are, uh, are participatory as far as the decision-making is concerned. And you look at the NEP 2020 also, which he introduced, or which the government introduced, and this is born out of a huge and wide uh, consultative process. Uh, you know, all stakeholders were consulted. Uh, after many rounds, finally, this, uh, this policy has crystallized. So the prime minister, whatever he does, he, he tries to achieve it. And uh, he, he doesn't uh, dream uh, small, he, he dreams big. Uh, he has a great resolve. He, he has this great ability to uh, motivate people, to inspire people by his personal example. And uh, the most importantly, he has instilled the sense of pride in youth and also has made them realize that they can do it. And this is very much reflected in the number of startups I mentioned. Uh, initially, something like 75,000 startups have come up in this country. So that, that is only because of the government's enabling policies and the youth taking up the challenge uh, to come up uh, with the innovative ideas and, and uh, implement them through these startups. And, and, finally, and finally, what endears everybody about the prime minister? that he wears this sense of nationalism, the love for his country on his sleeves. And that is so apparent. Uh, and that's what endears the youth of this country. And uh, given the Prime Minister's track record and what has been mentioned in this book and Honorable Vice Chancellor Professor Chakravarti did mention that this book will be a must read for the researchers, maybe 
uh, in future uh, decades, uh, I have a feeling there will be something more content which will be added uh, to this great man's uh, account. Uh, so with this, I stop here. Uh, thank you, Professor Chakravarti. Thank you, Jain uh, for a very uh, succinct and illuminating discussion on the book because you know I know it will take time to cover all the issues uh, which the book dealt with. But um, thanks a lot. Uh, it, it's very clear that uh, our Honorable Prime Minister stands out uh, because he shows things not by words, but by activities. So he's a man of action, unlike so many of our political leaders. And we who are part of the Central Universities uh, are really inspired. You know, and the inspirational speech which he delivered in, ba in Banaras recently, yeah. that shows that uh, despite being involved in so many activities simultaneously, he has the sharp mind to address the issues which uh, were bothering us. So that way uh, I, I share with your um, views that uh, we are really fortunate to have a leader uh, who is well equipped to guide India forward and in the right direction. Thank you very much, Jain Sahab, for this. And now we'll request um, uh, Dubey Sahab, because Dubey Sahab is in Amar Kanta. So um, he uh, warned me of uh, erratic internet connection. Hence, he uh, sent a recorded speech. He's around, he's, he's, uh, he's uh, with us, but uh, he didn't want to take any risk. That's why he sent a recorded speech well in advance, uh, because he, uh, he told me categorically that Omar Contag is a place where the internet connectivity is a big uh, issue. So I request um, uh, our uh, um, uh, host, uh, Dr. Nimai Shaha, to play the recorded speech of Professor Dubey. Professor Dubey, you are there, so you can listen to your own voice, which is a rare thing. <laughs> Nimai? Yes, Nimai? Hi, uh, yes. Uh. Professor Vidyut Chakrabarti Ji, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Vishwabharati University, Santi Niketan, Professor Vinod Kumar Jain Ji, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Tejpur University, Professor Srinivas Varkhedi Ji, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Central Sanskrit University, New Delhi, all faculty members of Vishwabharati University, Santi Niketan, all viewers, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I express my gratitude to Professor Vidhu Chakrabarti ji for providing me this opportunity to share my views with this book. The book, Modi at rate of 20, Dreams Meet Delivery. This is a masterpiece book which focuses on the contributions made by our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji as a public leader, as a world leader, since he was Chief Minister of Gujarat from 2001 onwards and after that when he became the Prime Minister of India from 2014 onwards. And this book has five different sections and there are 21 chapters in this book and this book has been edited and compiled by Blue Craft Digital Foundation and it has been published by Rupa Publications India. In the section 1 of the book, which deals with the social impact of Modi ji, in, in this section, our double Olympic medalist P. V. Sindhu writes that how Modi ji is a charismatic leader, how he connects very nicely with the youth of the country and how he has promoted a sportsman spirit amongst our youth. The section 2 deals with the political impact of Modi ji as a chief minister of Gujarat as well as as prime minister of India. And the famous writer Amish Tripathi writes in this section that how cultural revival of India has been made possible 
under the leadership of Modi ji. And in 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 this section, that our honourable Home Minister of India, uh, who represents that parliamentary constituency of Gandhi Nagar as well, honourable Amit Shah ji, he describes that how the journey of BJP under the leadership of Modi ji, how it gained importance, and what was the vision of Modi ji? when he was the chief minister of gujarat he transformed the gujarat all together during his chief ministership and similarly when he became prime minister of india how transformative changes he brought about in the indian society as well as the image of india abroad how it improved in this uh, section a chapter has been written by dr pradeep gupta as well and uh, who has pointed out that how Modi ji has changed the way elections are being contested in India. He has all together changed the perception of election being contested by various politicians in India. The section three of this book describes about the economic policy of the government of India. That how in India economy has climbed up from the very beginning since Modi ji joined as a prime minister of the country, and. Uh, in, in, in this section, a chapter has been written by Indian Chief Economic Advisor himself, by Anand Nages, Anant Nageswaran, as well as by Professor Arvind Pangadiya ji, who is himself a very respected economist of the world. And, and they, they, one India's a leading banker, Uday Kotak, has also authored a chapter in this section. The section 4 deals with the paradigm of governance. Very popularly, our Prime Minister Modi ji says that minimum government and maximum governance. So, in this context, on that a chapter has been written by the, the famous film actor Anpam Kher. And Anpam Kher has pointed out that uh, we generally do not trust politicians. But Modi ji is such a politician that uh, he is presently the most trusted politician. He is the person who what he speaks, he does. And uh, in, in this uh, section, Dr. Devi Sethi, uh, he is also an, uh, a famous uh, writer. He describes that how during the COVID-19 pandemic, when the world could, could see recession in economy world over, that how the leadership, charismatic leadership of Modi ji was successful in dealing with the COVID-19 management. And we know the, the, the famous technological man that uh, Nandan Nelkani who is responsible for bringing Aadhaar card in India. He has also authored one chapter and uh, he has uh, described very nicely how Modi ji has been successful in integrating technology in various spheres. And uh, in this section only, the, the Prime Minister say that uh, Principal Secretary Nependra Mishra ji, uh, he has described that how Modi ji executed plans very successfully. And uh, we are very much grateful to that Sadhguru Jaggi Vasudev ji that he also took some time to write a chapter in this section. And uh, he has mentioned that how Modi ji has served as multiplier of mass movements, that how mass movements have taken place under the leadership of Modi ji, various mass movements like uh, Swaksha Bharat Abhiyan, Ganga to cleaning projects and many Abhiyans like that. And in this section, the Sudha Murti ji, a famous writer, has also brought about uh, very nicely that the changes which has happened during Modi ji's years as a Prime Minister. And in the section 5, which relates to India and in its international affairs, that how during the leadership of Modi ji, India has proved himself as a global power and how amongst the other superpowers, how the role of India has been admired across the world. And in this section, a chapter has been written by Ajit Dudwal on Doval on security matters, who is the principal security advisor himself, and uh, our 
foreign minister S. J. Shankar ji has also written a chapter in the section about the foreign policy matters of Modi ji. Yet being the country, India is a country non-aligned, how it has maintained a strategic relationship with Soviet Union, uh, USA, as, as, as well as and many other countries. So all together we can see that this book projects various facets of Modi ji, our Prime Minister, and today, without any doubt, we can tell that uh, our Prime Minister Modi ji is a global, unmasked global leader, whether through social media, so Twitter, Facebook, or various other surveys have also pointed out that uh, he is at the top amongst the global leaders. And he has been a charismatic leader. And that being a charismatic leader and his mass appeal is reflected in forms of many of his schemes launched by him as a Prime Minister of this country. And these, these schemes have been very successful and very popular among the common masses. For example, one, famous, one very famous scheme launched by him was the Pradhan Mantri Janathan Yojana where more than 44 crore of the people were benefited and they opened their accounts in banks. And most of these people were from rural India, from the poor. So this is the inclusive concept of inclusive growth of Prime Minister Bodhiji. As he always points out, that related to his vision about the development, that Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Biswas, or Sabka Prayas. So this is the concept of his inclusive growth, that the person who is downtrodden, who is at the last step in the society, he should also take benefit of the development. <coughs> and this has been shown <coughs> under his leadership. So various other schemes like Ayushman Bharat, that uh, 5 lakh rupees insurance for medical. So any poor person, the, he has been issued a golden card, he can go to any hospital and he can take any type of treatment like that. Another one was Pradhan Mantri Ujjwala Yojana that uh, we know that in, in, in villages the women they were cooking on oats, coals. So that has now been replaced with the LPG and 9 crore of households have been benefited with the Pradhan Mantri Ujjwala Yojana. They got uh, free connections, free LPG. Another one bet Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao, that various schemes have been launched for girl child so that more and more girl child can take advantage of it. And if we trace back the leadership of Modi is when he was Chief Minister of Gujarat, in 2001 when he joined as Chief Minister of Gujarat, and that time the infrastructure of Gujarat was settled due to the Bhukamp earthquake in Kutch. It was very difficult to take over the situations. And within two, three years, Modi ji, on due to his leadership, he built Gujarat in such a way that Gujarat became the destination for various states to take lessons. And that become the, that, that is the concept of Gujarat model. Gujarat became a model state for various other states as well. So ease of doing business, that uh, he started this concept of ease of doing business business and now when he became Prime Minister in various states of the country and uh, that various states have been ranked based on ease of doing business in Gujarat it ranks top among them. Uh, that uh, now we can see about the economy of our country. When Modi joined as Prime Minister at that time the country's economy was at 7th, 8th position but now the e e economy we can see that uh, on the global level India is the fastest growing economy. It is the fifth largest economy in terms of gross, that uh, gross national product, national gross domestic product, fifth largest economy in the world, and third largest economy in terms of purchasing power parity. And uh, we, we can see that during the Prime Ministership, Modi ji, how he handled the COVID-19 pandemic situation. Many advanced countries of the world, like the England and the USA, they succumbed and uh, many deaths were there but if we can compare that the number of de deaths occurred and our, our population because India is a country with 135 crores of population 
So compared to the population and number of deaths, the number of deaths were much more in the advanced countries where the infrastructure was much better compared to the India. But it was the leadership of Modi ji and his government that the, he minimized the casualty even during the COVID-19 COVID pandemic and especially in the second wave of COVID-19 pandemic that many, many devastating situations were there across the world. Certain other schemes like Swachhta Abhiyan. Swachhta Abhiyan was launched in 2014 on 2nd of October. The Mahatma Gandhi ji, he dreamed about, he had dreamt about uh, Swachhta Abhiyan, that Safai Abhiyan. But it was the vision of Modi ji, the Swachhta Abhiyan was implemented in 2014 and very successfully the Swachhta Abhiyan has been launched across the country. Now we can see at airports or railway stations, on the roads, on very well. The public has got a sense that we should keep our environment clean. And in the Swachhta Abhiyan, the toilets, the toilets have been created for rural India. And we can see that uh, how roads, that infrastructure has been developed. In Pradhan Mantri, Sarat Yojana, the infrastructure has been developed across various, various states. And that uh, about uh, electricity yojana, Pradhan Mantri, Bidri yojana, electricity, the many remote villages are also being connected with the electricity. So that is one great uh, transformative change which we can see. Now one very important change which has come in India, I would like to mention that that, that is digitalization, intervention with digital technology. Now we can see that 80% of the transactions which are being done, either we take money from the bank or from anywhere or for any, any type of transaction, it is all digital transaction. So complete there is transparency, transparency in the transfer of money. In earlier days what used to happen that if one rupee was sent from the government then at the poor villagers account only 14 paisa was deposited there. But now with the intervention of digital technology in the digital India, this is the Modi ji's vision of digital India. Now with the digital India it is possible that if one rupee is being transferred, so completely one rupee reaches in the account. And same is being done that Kisan Nidhi, Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana, Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana, three times in a year money is being transferred, many thousand rupees are being transferred to the account of the farmers and the same money reaches to the farmer exactly what it has been transferred so and uh, related to the Atma Nirbhar Bharat with the slogan of Atma Nirbhar Bharat now many items many items are being manufactured in India which were being imported earlier for example now, now in Indian defense export has increased five, six times earlier, more than what it was ten years earlier. So we are exporting many of the defense items. And if we come to the agriculture level, now the India is the country which is second largest producer of wheat. India is the country's second largest producer of rice. We are first largest producer of milk. So now India is exporting wheat, rice to other countries. And we can see in the COVID-19 situation that COVID-19 India had the India has shown the capability that it could manufacture vaccines. The India manufactured two vaccines, Covishield and Covaxin, and it exported vaccines to various countries as well. And by now, the more more than 200 crore of population has been vaccinated with the indigenous vaccine. So this shows the competency of our scientists. So uh, in space technology, in biotechnology and whatever different field of science that India has progressed a lot during the last eight to nine years. That uh, Mangal Jan, India is the first country in its first attempt the Mangal Jan has, Mangal Jan has reached into the Mangal orbit. And India is now the country uh, from where many satellites from different uh, countries, different countries, the many satellites re representing different countries, those satellites are being launched 
from India. So that uh, India has got its importance, more importance in the global arena in terms of the space technology. Now, one very important point I would like to point out is the cultural revival of India. That India is a country with thousands and thousands of years, a great civilization. It represents the great civilization. And this civilization is due to the spirituality. And this is the spirituality of India that Indian philosophy has been acclaimed world over. And this is the Indian culture and in maintaining Indian culture and traditions, our places of worship have main have major role to play. They are of utmost importance. And we can see whether we talk about that Kasi Vishnath Dham, that corridor, that has been very nicely it has been developed. And so the Ram Temple is being constructed. And many religious places of worship. In the state of Gujarat also, the Pavagra Temple, that uh, after the 405 years, flag has been hosted on that, on the top of that temple. So this shows the cultural revival of our country. The India, the, the country with great cultural heritage, the civilization. So and the, it, it, it is the Prime Minister Modi ji who has revived the culture of the great India. And related to our language, the promotion of the Indian languages during the time of Modi ji, Hindi has got popularity across the world. We remember that it was our, that uh, during the Janta Party regime during 1977, it was the former, that uh, Atal Bihari Bajpayee, who as a foreign minister of India, who spoke for the first time in United Nations in Hindi. And after that, in 2014, when Modi ji became Prime Minister of India, he spoke in Hindi language in United Nations. So this signifies that our leader, Prime Minister of our country, he speaks in our own language on a global platform. And that was the region when he spoke in Hindi, Prime Minister Modi ji spoke in Hindi in United Nations. After that, United Nations made a Twitter handle in Hindi. So this shows that this is a, really a matter of much glory and pride for countrymen that our Prime Minister speaks in our own language at international platforms. And another thing about that yoga, now with the efforts of Prime Minister Modi ji only, now the International Yoga Day is being celebrated every year on 21st of June and yoga has been popularized at international spheres. One very important point I would like to point it out here that the National Education Policy 2020, which was rolled out by the Government of India on 29th of July, 2020. In a true sense, this is a policy, is India-centric policy, which envisages to produce such type of individuals who are rooted in Indian culture but with a global vision. And this policy advocates that up to primary level, education in our mother tongue, in Indian languages, has been made compulsory. And beyond that also, there is possibility of getting education in Indian language. So this is a great achievement because we got independence in 1947 and during the last 73-74 years, we did not think about such type of education where students can be educated in our own language. But this is the first education policy after the independence of India that now we can think of that our Children can take education in Indian language, in Hindi language, in many other Indian lang languages. Because it is very important that uh, we can think fundamentally in our own language itself. So if uh, our students get educated in own language, so definitely they, they will have more thinking capability. And uh, our, we know that, that our educational philosophers, this is the Vishwabharti is a place of Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore ji. He also advocated that education should be such that it should be connected with the nature. 
so holistic education he was also proponent of holistic education similarly mahamana pandit madan mohan malviya ji he also was of the opinion that holistic education should be core of the educational philosophy so many of educational philosophers have advocated like that so this they see the first educational policy in the independent india which talks about holistic and multidisciplinary education so that curiosity in our students can, can be enhanced and our students so they can have capability of thinking and to be become much and more much higher person without i mean they should get specialized in a particular discipline but at the same time they can become a good human being so this is the philosophy of national education policy and some of the other contributions made by modi ji in his prime minister sit uh, very important i would like to just uh, point out that 10% reservation for economically weaker section of the society this is also a landmark cont contributions and one more im im important point about modi ji as a global leader during the last 8 to 9 years modi ji has visited more than 110 countries abroad 10 different countries and usa he has visited seven times but whenever he has met the foreign leaders maybe barack obama maybe trump or other lead leaders with so much warmth and affection he has met that uh, entire set up has changed and whenever he has visited he visited uh, once he visited united states in houston we can we could see that uh, there was a popular nara like howdy modi like that and when trump came to india this namaste trump be became very famous so it was his bonding with the foreign leaders like that we remember that uh, when jinping the chinese premier he visited india he came to gujarat also he came to sabarmati front also so with the hey, with, with the way modi ji had bonding with him and similarly shinzo abe the late shinzo abe the then prime minister of japan when he had come to india he came to varanasi and he witnessed ganga aarti and the worship in the temple of lord vishnath as well so this this was the modi ji's emotional bonding with the global leaders due to which the image of india has been enhanced world over on the global global scenario so now we are celebrating 25th years of indian independence azadi ka amrit mahotsav and modi ji is a global leader in the indian leader who is taking india ahead he is the leader who is thinking that what is india at 75 years of independence and what india will be after the 100 years of independence so i just uh, i wanted to put forth some of my points related to the book as well as some other contributions made by modi ji but it will be very difficult that within a small book to summarize a achievement of such a global leader so i am very much hopeful that uh, other speakers will deliberate along deliberate in a long way and so that we we can get acquainted with the various aspects of our prime minister modi ji as a global leader as a and as a statesman and as a visionary person so thank you very very much and once again i express my thanks to professor vidyut chakrabarti ji for making me part of this talk thank you thank you very much thank you dubey sahab uh, i know you are around but um, your recording was fantastically done again your thanks to uh, digital improvement uh, across the country and uh, dubey ji uh, referred to many of the contributions of the leader uh, narendra modi ji but at the same time he also acquainted us with many programs which the prime minister as leader of the present ruling authority initiated and i'm sure with his uh, comments on many of the programs uh, we we know, now know 
that um, it was possible for this particular government to go ahead simply because they are led by one individual who is always positive, who is always optimistic. So with these kinds of uh, words about uh, Dube Saab speech, which is very illuminating and enlightening, uh, may I request our uh, next speaker, Professor Srinivas Vadakari, uh, the Vice Chair, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Sanskrit University, Delhi. Srinivas Ji, the floor is yours now. Thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity, Professor Vidya uh, Chakravarti Ji, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Vishwa Bharati, uh, Professor Jain, and Professor uh, Dubey, uh, who have spoken on Modi 2020 uh, dream meets the reality. Uh, in fact, the, the previous speakers have covered the entire book um, with many aspects. Uh, nothing is left for me to say, but certainly uh, Modi is uh, not a personality which can, uh, can be covered, which can be captured within 500 uh, pages. Because Modi is not a person. Modi is an imagination of the entire India. What I felt when I purchased this book uh, on, the, on the day of release in Delhi, I personally attended the function. And then I immediately I procured a copy for me. And uh, on that day, I within a few days, I just... Uh, uh, read a few articles. The representation of the authors, you know, they represent a different communities, uh, different uh, populations of India. You know, some people are uh, politicians, some are artists, some are uh, coming from education sector and IT sector and youth representation, and elders, colleagues. It's an in, in, interesting compendium uh, with multiple perception of different communities. You know, a person is perceived uh, by different communities in different ways. I think it is not Modi's just list of accomplishments. When I see this book is not a list of accomplishments. This book is all about his personality, through his actions, through his thinking, through his words, through his uh, various uh, you know, projects. That's how I think this book is a very interesting book. Many a times, either we read autobiographies, either we read the books, history books, or storybooks, or sometimes the people will write about various projects. But the matter here is, is not Modi. Actually, Modi through actions, Modi through projects, Modi through words, Modi through his thinking, Modi through his deliberations. Very interestingly, Modi is perceived by different communities in different ways. Altogether, Modi is a personality in this book. In fact, when we see Modi's 2020, 20 years of Modi is, uh, a, you know, uh, our honorable prime minister. As a, we are seeing him as a prime minister. That means last several years, he, he, he is our prime minister. And before that, he was a chief minister. But in these years, we are just capturing one aspect of Honorable Narendra Modi. But before that, there is a big, uh, I think, preparation period, which is very, very interesting. Because today I can see him as a prime minister, very successful world leader, very successful, uh, you know, person of delivery. 
but who is that person you know the preparation period which he has spent more than 30 years on the ground that is very important even people i have seen in these through articles people have identified that many a times we look at chief minister look, we look at the prime minister and he is through his actions through his projects but people here authors here try to look at his very personal reality which is exhibited through the action through the through the projects that means people have tried to peep into his inside you know to understand him as a person that is very interesting part here you know otherwise uh, when we look at the system prime minister is not a person he is a system chief minister is a system because an entire uh, prime minister system works for the success of the prime minister but here in the in the system of prime minister what we can see is his his uh, share is major share that is where we can see the uh, the gigantic personality of uh, honorable uh, prime minister uh, shri narendra modi ji today i would like to uh, slightly go with the other lines of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, because many things are listed by previous speakers and they have also uh, you know tried to uh, look into the details of uh, certain authors notes um, here uh, you know when uh, we see the whole uh, history of gujarat gujarat contributed uh, you know during the uh, independence day and post independence day we can see two great personalities in gujarat that is one is pre independent era Uh, uh mahatma gandhi and the second part of that who has integrated entire india is shri vallabhai patel so if we see if you look at uh, shri modi ji he is the amalgamation amalgamation of uh, these two personalities modi is not just a politician he is a philosopher modi is a philosopher and he is not just a politician he is a philosopher like gandhi and he is an executor like vallabhai patel he is a good manager he managed managed everything with all skills like vallabhai patel with very small uh, span of time he he traveled entire india and he united the india so similarly in when modi came india was really broken you know india was uh, in, you know looked into pieces with many languages with many but modi when modi came india became united this is the un unification force like vallabhai patel so i can see two different personalities in one person i mean that is vallabhai patel and mahatma gandhi together in in the form of shri modi ji that is the contribution of gujarat that we can see uh, the second very interesting point i want to quote uh, uh, and after reading entire uh, book uh, what i saw is very i i i i got um, uh, one uh, uh, sanskrit shloka suvarna pushpam prithivim चिन्वती पुषास्त्रय शूरश्च कृत विद्यश्चाति सीवित द्री पर्सन विल क्रिएट यु नो गोल औट ऑफ द मैंड दे दे डिग द द मैंड एंड द मैंड एंड देन दे गेट द गोल हु आर दे आर one is shura shura means the dare to, the person who who dares to take decisions without any doubt without any doubt himself within him in, in himself and in others and the person with wisdom wisdom and knowledge of the field and the third is the person who knows how to serve the people who has interest in, in serving the people 
so modi presented himself when he became prime minister he said i am not the prime pradhan mantri but i am pradhan sevak that's the change definition change that he has given to the post of prime minister he said i am here to serve the people this has made big change he works for 20 hours like a servant and he is he is very knowledgeable to to the core of any field recently when we attended uh, you know uh, 300 vice chancellor of big universities who have spent more than 40 years in their own field field of education many educationist before them he came up he came up with a new idea all together new ideas he said i will give you two things the two sutras he gave which wonders me that is land to lap and lap to land he asked the universities to establish the relation between lab and land so many things we can see in the land but they don't have approval of the lab many things are experimented in the lab but they don't have, they don't see the land at all the, the prime minister asked us to connect the land and lab this is very interesting sutra the second he said praman and parinam in the we can see the knowledge is available outside the university campuses which is in huge parinam because we can see the parinam indian knowledge systems indian indic knowledge traditions have shown the parinam that means the results are there but they don't have praman they don't have proof he asked us to give proofs for indian knowledge systems and their results on the ground on the other side he said there are pramanas in available in our indian sources but we don't have real results they take them to the labs and give the results for them so in two ways he connected the entire academia and industry and academia and real life this is where we we think we consider that in he is an educationist great educationist if you go to in the, his industrial uh, speech in industrial uh, congresses science congresses everywhere he comes with new idea even if he goes to a temple he brings a new sutra therefore i consider that his in depth understanding of any field makes him a very wise and knowledgeable and of course we have seen him uh, very dare to take decisions uh, you know like uh, note bandi jab india mein hua it was a very shocking and uh, you know no only only a daring personality can take such a decision so quoting this shloka i just i wanted to cover these three aspects of his personalities are covered by many people and if you i want to quote uh, you know now uh, what is the uh, perception of a youth young community in india pv sindhu writes and what is women's person women's perception about modi shobhana writes and uh, his his uh, age old companion companion of his political career more than uh, decades more than 2 3 decades shri amit shah uh honorable home minister of india has described modi ji with the three terms democracy delivery and politics of hope very interesting this article must be read by one and all politics of hope you know always politics is hopeless people would say hopeless politics but he changed the order he says politics of hope the new change that is brought in politics by shri modi ji is politics of hope and therefore no i can see in in the in the field of politics there were there was an aversion among the people that we it is not our field you know there was a tendency that only the uh, the politicians uh, can come only through some 
hesitancy i mean some people his forefather is an mla and his uh, father is an M mp and he can become a minister that was the tendency modi broke that honorable prime minister modi said that no in india anyone can come to politics and he can become uh, you now today uh, you know we can see honorable uh, president of india is a, a person from you know very 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 uh, down trodden community and she is she represents the poorest of poor uh, of india this is the uh, you know politics of hope you know there is a hope for an, every young boy uh, you know in 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 poor families he can become anything in india this is the you know possibility that he has spread in india and we can see uh, his uh, democracy you know he goes to the public all questions and all his decisions are based on public opinion he never stops and takes decision and his delivery once the aspirations of people uh, are known to him he makes law and he delivers this is the beauty of the uh, you know new administration of shri narendra modi ji the other side you know i wanted to see how many uh, good representations in the book the other representation is anupam kher anupam kher is a, an artist and he is a political a politician and he is a public personality and he he has contact with directly with public and he writes modi the man india trusts in crisis very interesting article you know when crisis comes then the people trust the modi hai to mumkin hai so this is the beautiful world we can know it's it's it is it is it has it is not just proverb you know this proverb will remain in india forever as long as hindi hindi continues modi hai to mumkin hai this will continue as part of idiomic expression and expression of hindi a hindi ka ek shashvatik ek proverb ban jayega log jo hai isko modi hai to mumkin hai एक सौ साल के बाद भी दो सौ साल के बाद भी इसका उपयोग करते रहेंगे क्योंकि मोदी है तो मुमकिन है दिस मोदी एंड मुमकिन ये जो जो पैरल जो बन गया है बिकॉज ऑफ ट्रस्ट दैट पीपल हैव डेवलप्ड इन हिम सो देन वी हैव सीन द पेंडेमिक सिचुएशन वेयर ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर केम इन फ्रंट एंड ड्राइव द एंटायर इंडिया विथ स्मूथ यू नो द लेस डैमेज दैट वी कैन सी in india when uh, devi shetty writes devi shetty dr devi shetty is a great you know um, uh, 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 medical professional in india uh, he writes that when pandemic situation came in india he is the person who took decision and he is the person who drew he inspired the people to uh, to avoid public contact he is the person uh, who started one lab there was one lab in pune and th today more than 3000 labs in india for it is cr and he he was the first person who uh, developed you know who who in he who directly went to the labs and asked the inspired the the people to develop vaccination and he delivered the vaccination not only to indian to others also so this is the whole you know even he developed that trust not only india but other countries in poor countries also trusted Uh, modi and another very important aspect we can see is aapad mein avasar nobody can see this aapad mein avasar matlab he saw the opportunities when uh, when uh, the uh, uh, big uh, covid situation came in india he used that opportunity for digital transformation he used that opportunity for many 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 things even even nep 2020 was uh, introduced during the because because the previous education system was collapsed and india wanted new education system and policy uh, modi ji came with new policy and uh, i want to quote another uh, person that is uh, very close to him uh, who met him i think uh, when uh, modi ji became a uh, prime minister designate designate candidate then uh, he, uh, this person was called by him and he was asked to support him that is none other than 
Sri Nrupendra Mishra Ji, uh, the principal secretary to Prime Minister. And he, he writes, no shadow between idea and reality. This is beautiful article. I mean, we can have many ideas, but there is a great uh, no distance between the reality, but uh, no shadow between the reality and idea. That is the beauty of the administration or governance of the, uh, uh, the new government. That's where Rupendra Mishra identifies Modi's role in Indian governance. And uh, I can see another very interesting article by Dr. Jai Shankar, Foreign Policy. Dr. Jai Shankar Ji, Honorable Prime Foreign Minister, uh, Minister of External Affairs, uh, is uh, a, a long-term, uh, I mean, um, uh, officer um, who a diplomat, and who had a long experience uh, in negotiating with other countries. That person described what Modi Ji is when he met first time in China as a, an officer. Uh, he, he, I think he was uh, Indian uh, ambassador in China. Uh, during that period, uh, uh, Modi ji as chief minister visited China. When he called him, uh, you know, for discussion, he mentions that uh, he was not a CM. In outside India, Modi ji was not a CM of Gujarat. He was representing India. And he had all knowledge about international relations with China. That's where he recognized him as a glow as a, as a as a national leader, not as a CM. You know? uh, Dr. Jai Shankar noted it. And the other person, Ajit Doval. Ajit Doval is, as we all of know, is national security advisor to the Prime Minister, writes about national security and prime contribution of Prime Minister Modi for national security. So overall, I don't go into the details of it. Very interestingly, who wrote the preface for this book? That is very interesting. <laughs> she is none other than she Bharat Ratna Lata Mangeshkar. Who was that? No. She was neither a politician, nor an administrator, nor a no, she was a in one sense, he, she represents all of us. Because she was a very, 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 very uh, you know, she was a great artist, of course, but she was a very common man in all these fields. You know, if you consider any of these fields, she is she has nothing to do with those fields. And definitely, she was not a CM, she was not a politician, she was not an administrator, she was not a project, because she was a very individual person who performed, you know, music for entire life. She writes forward. That means a common person has written, uh, you know, uh, a foreword for this. That is very interesting. Uh, you know, this uh, these uh, editors could have brought a, a, a foreword from any a global leader, but a person who represents Indian common public. That is because every Indian knows Lata Mangeshkar, and Lata Mangeshkar is at every house. If she writes, every Indian feels that I am writing forward. That is the beauty of this book, where Lata Mangeshkar represents a common person uh, in India, and she writes a forward to this very beautiful book. She, she writes that Modi uh, is not just a personal person. He is a person who transformed India. Uh, उन्होंने लिखा है लास्ट में मैं स्ट्रीम शब्द को मैं यहां उल्लेख करना चाहता हूं गतिशीलता जुनून एंड साहस ये तीन शब्द लता मंगेशकर जी ने लिखा है शी डिस्क्राइब्स मोदी विद दिस वर्ड थ्री वर्ड्स गतिशीलता सो so, निरंतर जैसे गंगा जी प्रवाहन करती है गंगा जी का प्रवाह है ऐसे निरंतर गतिशील व्यक्तित्व मोदी जी का है कहीं उन्होंने स्टॉप नहीं किया अपने जीवन में किसी एक जगह में मोदी जी ने स्टॉप हो गया ऐसा नहीं है निरंतर गतिशील व्यक्तित्व है दूसरा जुनून मतलब ये जुनून जो है एक चैतन्य का स्वभाव है जिसमें जुनून नहीं है तो वो जड़ है तो जुनून के 
के व्यक्ति जो रिप्रेजेंट करने प्रतिनिधित्व वो मोदी जी है और दूसरा है साहस जो इंडिया में कमी है तो साहस की कमी है तो मोदी जी साहस करते हैं आज अंतिम रूप से इस गुजरात मॉडल जो खड़ा कर दिया है एजुकेशन में बेसिक नीड्स में इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर में और मोदी जी एक गुजरात में एक नया मॉडल खड़ा कर उनका साहस के वर्ष हुआ है उन्होंने हर डिसीजन को एक साहस के साथ लिया है आज जितने भी मैं अंतिम रूप से मतलब ज्यादा दर नहीं करते हुए इस पुस्तक का एक विश्लेषण में मेरे और से यदि कुछ कहना है उस पढ़ने के बाद मुझे जो मिला है वॉट इज टेक होम मैसेज फॉर मी इज दिस मैं उसको आपके सामने रखना चाहता हूँ उससे पहले मैं uh, एक मोदी जी का तो तीन बड़े बड़े काम में जो मुझे दिख रहा है वो स्वच्छ भारत और स्वस्थ भारत और आत्मनिर्भर भारत शायद भारत के एक ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन में तीन केवल शब्द मात्र नहीं है उसको एक ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन के लेवल में मोदी जी ने दिखाया तो वो स्वस्थ भारत है और स्वच्छ भारत है और आत्मनिर्भर भारत तो एक क्यों है उनके मन में हमेशा एक होता है वो हमेशा अपने पार्टी के कार्यकाल में भी बोलते हैं राष्ट्र सर्वोपरि मोदी जी भी नहीं है और मोदी जी के पार्टी भी नहीं है मोदी जी के कोई कोई मित्र भी नहीं है वो राष्ट्र सर्वोपरि ये भाव जो है शायद मोदी जी को बहुत उत्कृष्ट व्यक्तित्व तो बनाता है आज वो ग्लोबल लीडर इसलिए है क्योंकि उन्होंने माना है राष्ट्र सर्वोपरि तो राष्ट्र को अत्युत्कृष्ट श्रेणी में रखते हुए काम करने वाले मोदी जी हमारे लिए सब आदर्श है तो मेरे लिए एक 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 प्राध्यापक के रूप में एक छात्र के रूप में एक विद्यार्थी के रूप में मुझे जो उन्होंने कंट्रीब्यूशन किया है वो है नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी 2020 ये आज के पॉलिसी नहीं है जितने भी गवर्नमेंट के पॉलिसी है मैंने देखा है ऑल दो पॉलिसीज आर टूडेज पॉलिसी लेकिन एनईपी ट्वेंटी इज सच ए पॉलिसी विच इज फ्यूचरिस्टिक पॉलिसी इंडिया को भारत बनाने वाला एक बड़े पॉलिसी को नीति को मोदी जी ने दिया है वो आज के लिए नहीं दिया है लेकिन कल के लिए दिया है तो फ्यूचरिस्टिक पॉलिसी दैट हैज बीन कंट्रीब्यूटेड बाय मोदी इज ग्रेट कंट्रीब्यूशंस टू इंडिया टू 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 इट्स ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन लास्टली बट नॉट द लीस्ट वॉट इज मोदी फॉर मी आफ्टर रीडिंग ऑल दीज बुक्स वॉट इज मोदी फॉर मी विद्युत चक्रवर्ती जी आपने बहुत अच्छा ये डिलिब्रेशन रखा है वॉट इज मोदी फॉर मी जस्ट टू डेज बैक आई वॉन्ट टू आई हैड बीन टू सरदार वल्लभ भाई पटेल जो नर्मदा में जो डैम है वहां गया था स्टैचू ऑफ यूनिटी मोदी जी का जो व्यक्तित्व किसी को देखना है तो जाना है स्टैचू ऑफ यूनिटी में क्योंकि हम कभी कभी व्यक्तित्व को एक टीवी में देखते हैं तो उसका व्यक्तित्व तो छोटा दिखता है एक बुक में पढ़ते हैं तो उसको और छोटा दिखता है लेकिन मोदी जी उसमें पर्याप्त नहीं होते हैं मोदी जी को इमेजिनेशन भी कर नहीं पाते लेकिन बियॉन्ड इमेजिनेशन मोदी इमेजिन करते हैं वही उनका बिगनेस का उनका उनका एक व्यक्तित्व का बहुत बड़ा स्वरूप है बियॉन्ड इमेजिनेशन ए पर्सन थिंग्स बियॉन्ड एनी इमेजिनेशन तीन उदाहरण में देता हूँ आपके सामने रखना चाहता हूँ वन इज स्टैचू ऑफ यूनिटी द सेकेंड इज Varanasi transformation of Vishwanath Temple, and the third, and uh, uh, which is uh, uh, very important, is New Indian Parliament House. मैं आपको बताना चाहता हूँ मोदी जी यहाँ अमर रहेंगे इन तीन कारण से physically at least physically हाँ वो तो एक statue of unity इतना बड़ा देखा उन्होंने उस चित्र भी हम सोच भी नहीं सकते भारत के लिए सर्वो सर्व उन्नत प्रपंच में अत्युन्नत एक प्रतिमा को बनाकर भारत के एक अखंडता को उन्होंने स्थापित किया है और दूसरी बात एक सर्वोत्कृष्ट काशी जैसे विश्वनाथ मंदिर जैसे एक श्रद्धा स्थान को उन्होंने शुद्ध कर दिया है और तीसरी बात भारत के पॉलिटिकल सेंटर केंद्र देवालय जो है जहां जहां मोदी जी ने जब प्रधानमंत्री बने थे तब झुक के उस उससे अपने माथे को स्पर्श किया था मतलब प्रणाम करके उस मंदिर में उन्होंने पादार्पण किया था 
उस मंदिर को उन्होंने नया मंदिर के रूप में पार्लियामेंट के रूप में बन, बना रहे हैं तो ए है मोदी मोदी इज जस्ट बिग कोई अनंत का और ब्रह्म का स्वरूप हम देखना चाहते हैं भारत में वो मोदी जी का स्वरूप है इस पुस्तक में वही वर्णन किया गया है धन्यवाद थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू श्रीनिवास जी फॉर ए वेरी इनसाइटफुल इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ द एसेज इन दिस पर्टिकुलर बुक एंड यू हैव टच्ड अपॉन मेनी एरियाज which uh, our earlier speakers uh, didn't focus on so i think now we have got a kind of all round view of the uh, more than 20 essays on uh, the dynamics of the new leadership represented by our honorable prime minister so i think we have got a discussion um, of uh, the book which is now to quote uh, jain sahab inclusive discussion um dubey sahab talked about uh, each and every essays and also talks about many programs which uh, were initiated by this particular government under the leadership of the most dynamic foresight full prime minister uh, i have nothing to add really except to formally thank but since i am i've been chairing so i i am attempting to say a few words and i know it's already almost 6 o'clock so i don't want to hold you back but i'll take 5 minutes to wrap up the discussion in fact uh, like sridivas ji i wanted to begin with lata mangeshkar so lata mangeshkar doesn't belong to any of the known fields i mean he is everywhere she is everywhere she is so popular a uh, singer that we cannot even think of her life without lata mangeshkar or her name and even lata mangeshkar um, says in her foreword that narendra bhai stands out because people trust him now that's very important that here is a leader who is trustworthy uh, for the people of india as a whole which is probably uh, not the case in the earlier uh, period because um, uh, after nehru we really didn't have that kind of popular leader which modi represents i mean nehru's popularity was linked with his role in the nationalist movement nehru's popularity was linked with the fact that he was gandhi's nominated heir so uh, so but modi ji is a self made man as in uh, sinibas ji said and also endorsed by dubey sahab and jain sahab that modi ji is um, one who came from very humble background like our honorable president the, the present president of india uh, madam draupadi murmu so i think you know he is the one who had shown to us that anybody can become prime minister of the country provided he or she has the potential now i think the the two important ideas which are very striking to me as a, a teacher as a student and as one who is handling higher education in contemporary india along with my colleagues like dubey sahab jain sahab and srinivas ji two important ideas to me are very very critical for us one the point has already been mentioned by the honorable speakers um sabka saath sabka vikas sabka vishwas and sabka prayas now you know these these particular expressions in a set of expressions represent um inclusivity that means uh, modi ji is one of those prime ministers one of those global leaders who wanted to involve people in every activities of the national well being and i think you know that in 2015 modi ji insisted on the mps of lok sabha and rajya sabha that they should adopt at least five villages and look after the well being of these villages now here i would like to um, add also that this particular idea was initiated by uh, the founder of vishwa bharati gurudev rabindranath tagore when he started vishwa bharati in 1921 he started 
by adopting five villages. Now we have got 60 villages which are adopted by the university. And what we do, we provide skill to the villagers in the 60 villages which are located in the vicinity of the campus. So I think you know, Modi ji is the one who recognized the importance of this particular scheme of Guru Dev Rabindra Tagore uh, and implemented that uh, unless and until we take care of the villages, India um, cannot be improved the way he wanted. So I think that's important. At the same time, he is a very modern man. That's why he always talked about digital India. And here I'd like to refer to one instance which Nandan Nilekani talked about in his book that you know when uh, he was the one who was working on Diksha, um, the digital infrastructure for knowledge sharing. Now Diksha, and he said that when I talked to the prime minister and in five minutes time, prime minister understood the objective of Diksha uh, without you know, getting into the papers which uh, Nilakani shared with the prime minister. And this particular example shows that he thinks ahead of us. He thinks ahead of us uh, because he thinks from heart, not from mind. He thinks of the country as a whole, and he always thinks of ideas, programs, which are of help for ensuring well-being of the people at large. And, and the second point, which um, was referred to by Srinivasji, pandemic. Now, in the pandemic, we are really, everybody got demoralized. And the prime minister introduced many schemes. And not only that, you know, the vaccination drive. It's remarkable. I mean, it's a country which is where even, even today we have got 34% of the people who live below poverty line. Yet, India is probably one of the uh, you know few countries where people got vaccinated three times. We got booster also. So, you know, this is amazing. And this was possible simply because of the inspiration of the leader at the helm of affairs. Here, you know, I must not be misunderstood by you that a, 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 a government, or for that matter, any collectivity functions on the basis of coordination. And the coordination depends on the, um, the person who is at the helm of affairs. So uh, Modi ji, besides being super intelligent, is also a good coordinator. As a result, you know, it was possible for him to execute many policies, which are apparently you know, contradicted, which are apparently questioned by his detractors, you know, for ensuring well-being of the country as a whole. Now, the the I mean, uh, uh, we three speakers talked about NEP. Now, NEP as you know, as is a roadmap basically. I mean, uh, when we talk about NEP, I think we should be careful in in thinking that NEP is not the scheme; it's a roadmap, and uh, in the roadmap which is based on not what to do, but how to do. I mean, that's very important. I mean, people tend to uh, misguide others that NEP is a kind of blueprint uh, of uh, future education, which is partly true, partly not true, simply because NEP is a roadmap. You know, it allows us to think independently. It allows us to think differently in the sense that if you look at 1986 education policy, you'll find that in that particular policy, what we did we did imitate the Western mode of education. For the first time in Indian history, we are looking back at, at our intellectual heritage. As I said, um, uh, the other day I was in uh, a program celebrating Acharya PCD's 161st birthday. And you know they, that's again uh, a policy adopted by government of India that you know, they will celebrate 22 of the uh, scientists before independence who brought India to the global map. You know, Jagadish Chandra Bose, Meghnath Saha, um, C.V. Raman, Mr. Soraya. You know, these are the people. So I, I was a part, part of this uh, PC Day birthday celebration. And there, you know, uh, uh, all of you know that he wrote a book called Hindu View of Chemistry. Now, Hindu View of Chemistry, you know, the title appears to be misleading in today's context, but his main purpose was to bring out the contribution, the seminal contribution of uh, chemists in the past, you know, Ch Charong, Sastrut, you know, these are the two important individuals 
uh, Acharya Pisire talks about. Now you may ask the question, can we bring back their glory and can we just, you know, sit on what they did? No, that's not the purpose of Pisire. Pisire brought out those two, uh, two volumes in 1902 and 1908. And he was aware that, you know, they talked about these ideas several thousand years ago. So if I say that we'll have to imitate those works now, you know, people will identify me as both the foolish, the, the foolish of the lot. So what he did, you know, for me, the, I mean, that's I'm quoting PC Ray. For me, the works of Susrut and Charo were sources of inspiration. That you know, if you have the desire, if you have the will, you can do something miracle. So I think you know the new education policy is that kind of roadmap, which if we follow sincerely, probably in course of time, will do miracle. Because this is the one which is allowing us to go back to our roots, to go back our, to our heritage, to go back to our legacy. And you know, on that basis, we feel proud, we feel productive, and we feel innovative. As a result of uh, acquiring all these qualities, probably we'll be able to contribute something immensely significant not for only Indians, but for the humanity. I mean, Kobishil and Kovaxin are two examples. I mean, we contributed. Yes, uh, Kobishil yeah, in collaboration with Oxford University, but Kovaxin is our own product. So I think you know, we are capable, and that capability comes out of our confidence. And somehow or the other, that confidence was lacking. And I salute the present leadership, especially the leader at the top. Um, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister of the country for having inspired a moribund nation. Now we are all confident about our own ability. We are confident that you know nothing is impossible as far as we are concerned. So I think that way uh, Modi ji um, stands out, which Lataji talks about in her foreword. Now I'll just end with um, uh, a, a small poem by. Uh, Shurikan Tripathi or Nirala uh, to just um, you know summarize the discussion which we had um, with the contribution of um, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor and also my uh, dear colleague uh, Jain Sahab uh, from Silchar uh, Assam University, Dubey Sahab from Gujarat in Modi's state, and uh, Srinivasji from Delhi, where Modi now resides and operates um, uh, from uh, North Block. For the entire country. Now, Shurakant Tripathi Dinalaji uh, talks about uh, the you know, uh, conceptualizes the greatness of um, the individuals and how this can be achieved. And he spoke in a poetic language, which I think needs to be uh, reiterated today uh, uh, to to rejuvenate you know us again in 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 accordance with the ideas put forward by. The Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, and articulated by many authors, and those who are globally known, and those who don't belong to any party, those who are not, you know, prejudiced, but they are known in their field. So many, and and to to articulate their, uh, you know, expression vis-a-vis -vis this Honorable our Honorable Prime Minister, I think Sudhi Kanthri Party's um, three four lines are of great relevance to us. Choro mat apni an. Choro mat apni an. Bhale bomb phat jai. Bhulo mat apni man. Bhulo mat apni man. Bhale shish kaat jai. Bhale shish kaat jai. Marna hai. Marta hai to insan eki bar marta hai. मरता है तो इंसान एक ही बार मरता है क्योंकि यमराज दुबारा कष्ट नहीं करता है। Now this is the crux that Modi ji is the one who gave us un awareness, confidence, who gave us man, you know, our own spiritual authority of ourselves, and he also believes that for the attainment of the goal we can go to any extent. And you know, uh, death, death is the supreme sacrifice. If we don't get scared of death, then we can go to any extent to fulfill our objective, to fulfill our goal. 
So I think, you know, with these words, again, I thank the uh, speakers, uh, my friends, my colleagues, and also honorable vice chancellors of Tejpur um, Assam University, uh, Dube Sahab from Gandhinagar, um, Central University of Gujarat, and Srinivasji from Sanskrit University, um, New Delhi, and also those who attended this particular interesting speech. And uh, if you have any questions, if you have any comments to make, please pass it on to uh, Nimai, our um, host today, and we'll certainly take them into account. And we are planning to prepare a booklet on the basis of today's discussion. And if my friends, if you have got anything um, pressing to suggest, anything pressing to convey to the host, please do it uh, without hesitation, and that will help us in preparing the booklet which we are doing. Uh, so with these, again, I thank all of you. Namaste and take care and God bless. Jai Hind. Yes, Jumai? Yes, sir. Uh, till this time, there is no more questions in the chat box. Uh, hmm. <clears throat> May we wait uh, one, two minutes, sir, if there is anything come in the chat box or we'll... No, I think, you know, since, uh, you know, uh, they, this, uh, my colleagues are really, we have been waiting for almost two hours and yes. they have some pressing work. So I think, you know, we'll uh, take them into account when we prepare the booklet. So I think with this, may I uh, request uh, you to come to the conclusion by expressing word of thanks. Yes, sir. So uh, now today we are just uh, at the tag end of our book review event, which has been uh, organized in blended mode. Some of we are in physically available in the library and some other places, and our honorable speakers are in the online. And the basic objective of this book review program is not only to satisfy our instruction for ministry, rather to glorify the content of the book uh, with the uh, objective and comments from the different luminaries of Indian different parts. And the basic objective was Indian Prime Minister's approach for human resource and community development. How this has been uh, magnified in the book that has been clearly stated by our uh, speakers, uh, Professor Vinod Kumar Jain, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Tejpur University, Assam, Professor Ram Sankar Dube, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Central University of Gujarat, Gandhinagar, and then finally, Professor Srinivas Arakati Sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Central Sanskrit University, Janakpur, New Delhi. And uh, at the end of this, taking all these things, our Vice Chancellor, who has not only may have presided over the session, he has also given his valuable inputs uh, and conclude the session very uh, simply and quickly, because it's a very, uh, all the speakers and our VC also uh, the same opinion that it's very uh, difficult task to chapterize or to confine our honorable prime minister's views and thoughts and his activities in a book or 600 pages or some other things. So I think with these few words, we may now try to extend our deep sense of regards to all our honorable reviewers who are supposed to be very busy by their own positions and their own schedule. In spite of the several business and very short time, uh, our uh, cordial invitation, they are accepted and they spare with some times and they give out, give some valuable inputs, uh, which uh, help us to, to understand the books, Modi 20 dreams uh, into uh, Dream Smith delivery. So I think, uh, uh, let me extend our deep regards and sense of gratitude to all the reviewers, all the speakers here. And finally, I would like to convey our deep sense to our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Vidhu Chakurti sir, who is also taking every care for staging this event uh, so far as uh, time is going on. And also I'd like to uh, pay our deep sense and thanks to all of our colleagues, uh, faculty members, research scholars, students, staff, officers, and other than Mr. Vardhi, those who have joined in the floor, uh, we like to extend our deep regards and uh, congratulations from Mr. Bharati. And I think this will help us to organize and insist us to organize some more events in future. 
with these few words and with kind permission from our honorable reviewers and our visitors, uh, let us uh, just take the uh, permission to conclude our today's session. Okay, so uh, I think our uh, elective, elective power of our central administrative, administrative building has been gone away. So my visitor may not be available in this time at the chair. Oh, sir, yes, yes, uh, sir is here. So sir, uh, with your kind permission, uh, I think we may now conclude and uh, uh, leave the meeting. May we, sir? Okay. So, uh, and uh, uh, before concluding, I would like to take permission from our three reviewers. Sir, in generally, whatever we have practiced is that uh, every, uh, this online mode of lecture, we like to upload this lecture to our university, you know, YouTube channel, because if this is not possible to everyone to listen these things in real time. So in future course of action, people may listen it. So I think you all will allow us to upload in our university website, uh, in our university YouTube channel to upload these things. And of course, as I told, we will just figureize this today's events in our booklet with your kind permission. So thank you. And we will meet you physically in our campus when our uh, pandemic and your business, business schedule will allow us. We are very keen to welcome you in our campus physically. Thank you very much, one and all. Thank you, sir. Uh, Professor Vinod Kumar Jain, sir. Professor Ramsankar Dubey, sir. And Sinuas Varakadi, sir. So with your kind permission, let us wrap up our today's session with kind permission from you and our uh, chairperson of this session, our VC, sir. Sir, may we wrap up? Sir, you are mute, sir. Please unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Uh, I think, you know, uh, last time uh, at the end, you know, we had some technical difficulties yes, because there was power cuts. But anyway, uh, it's over. So kindly go ahead and wrap it up. Okay. So, sir, with your kind permission, let us allow to uh, leave from the meeting and you may also leave from the meeting. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening to all. Yes.